Hey everybody. Hi. How's it going? Oh, I have to look here tonight. It's good to see you. Oh yeah, wow. Okay, so, um, so good evening. Um, I'm gonna turn off this fan. How, is everything okay, Stephanie Cake, as far as you can tell? Yeah, things are a little, a little buffery tonight, and that could be Twitch, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, I saw some, you know, hey, Kay, kitty, hey. So I saw some, yeah, this little, you know, thing that's like, well, we're dropping frames, we're not happy. Um, but the internet is strong, the force is strong with this one, and, um, you know, I think it should be okay. I'm not sure, maybe, yeah, sometimes Twitch has a little moment, you know, sometimes. Um, the point is that if, if there were something, if something were to happen and it would get real weird, we have the ability to go, hang on, and I stop the stream and I start it again and nobody has to have a new link or a new thing, usually. So if that happens, then we'll take a look. But we have the beautiful, the talented, the brilliant Stephanie Cake on the case. Cake's on the case. And, and so she's watching things. Cake, uh, how, you, how, things are okay. Like, okay, okay. I think I think so. Okay. I think so. I think it's other than I, you know, again, and I see other people saying it's a little buffery. Mm -hmm. I think it's Twitch. I don't think it's you. Because I, you, our yeah. connection is good. Okay. Good. Good. And you know, this has happened before where it did that for a minute, kind of like a like a thunder cloud or something passed over the Twitch headquarter, you know, antenna, and then and then it it resolved. So so hopefully we'll be okay. Uh, it's incredible this thing works at all. You know, when you think about it. Um, and it's incredible that this stream worked tonight because the, a lot, there were a lot of problems. My camera, which was gifted by a quilt nerd, you know who you are, uh, in the Lurker Lounge, um, it's not functioning. I don't know why, uh, but that, but I did everything I could. And so something's going on with it. So I'm using my laptop camera, which is strange because usually I'm using my second monitor camera. And so I'm looking up at you like this and I can look at you straight on, you know, but now, I have to do it like this. So we'll see what happens. But 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 the point is is that we have the soundboard. Oh, sorry. And we have the um, the content and we have the the host and we have the producer and we have our friends in the chat. And I'm going to say hi to some folks and anybody who's watching out there who's um, who's in the lurker lounge. That's what we call the the folks who watch but don't chat. Sorry. I'm going to keep doing that. The folks who, who watch but don't uh, participate in the chat, I, I dig you, I'm a lurker in some live streams. Hey, we did a hype train. That's so cool. If you're here on Twitch, some people watch on YouTube and Facebook, which is totally fine, but the party is like, the party is on Twitch. And maybe, I don't know if I like that phrase, but, but you know, you subscribe to the show on Twitch, you support the show by subscribing on Twitch. And uh, Twitch has like bells and whistles and stuff that we really like, and I just gotta be different. So, um, but yeah, Twitch is really fun and we don't have any trolls over here, which is really nice. And you can support the show. And then when like enough people like buy a subscription or they, um, uh, cheer with bits, which is great. It's actually a revenue stream for the channel. Um, when you when you do stuff and you give subscriptions and stuff, we uh, there's this hype train. Yeah, it's just like a exciting thing that happens. We like flashing lights around here, you know. Um, so yeah, so come over to Twitch and and watch the show. And and, and even if you don't uh, get involved in the chat, that's okay. I'm glad you're here. But we do have our chatters. And I do love you. I love you so. Sherlock, oh my God, you were first in the chat. First in the chat. Um, Padma's here and Jill, hello, my dear. Um, we have Myra, thank goodness. Not a show without Myra, it's true. Um, my Great Cats and Word and Bird Nerd. Oh, it's good to see you. Quilting Politic, I saw Babe, hey babe. Mm. Uh, Qua Qua Cat, Polyester Bebe. Polyester Bebe. I want you to know, and I've said it before, that my husband and I, that's our pet name for each other, Bebe. Bebe. <laughs> Bebe. Um, and so when I, see, when I see polyester, Bebe, I think about that. Uh, you did finally make a live. You know what? The show's really fun live. It's fun, the replay's fun, but the show's fun. Ivy's here, Ivy! And Robin, Robin, oh, Robin. 
and I think maybe Suzanne is here. Um, QB Tara is here. This is great. Mishra, my mother is here in the flesh. Here comes my mother. She's here because I'm in Iowa. See, that's why things are different because I'm in Iowa and I have to do everything differently. Look at who it is. It's Marianne Fonz. Hi. You have to look in this one. You have to look, the, not that one, this one. Hi. Look at that. I brought you this delicious salad. Well, look, it's cake. Mm. What is this? I thought this was a beer. I thought this was a literal well, that's beer. Italian dressing, in case you don't like it. <laughs> so here's your cloth napkin. Oh my! <laughs> this happens. You know, this has happened before. Here's your cool silverware. Oh my god! Here's your drip salad. It's so good. What if, without any irony whatsoever, it was like excellent? Mm, yes. So. <laughs> This dressing is wow, real, real it sweet. Wow, it smells really good. It's, there's apples and pecans and bacon and chicken and romaine. The green screen, look, the green screen takes the lettuce out. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> so this is really sweet dressing. No, thank you. Okay, so I'll yeah, take I'll that use home. the Italian. I thought you would. Thanks, Mom. This yeah. smells great. Mm. It's good. Just say, good. Hi to, just say hi to the people. Hi, people. So Thanks. I had this salad. They used to, the Drift is a great mm -hmm. restaurant here, right in Winterset. Mm -hmm. And the drift salad is so good. And it used to be huge, and so I was gonna give you half of it, but I ate all mine, so I got you one year of your own. <laughs> I love you. Thank you. Yep, Mark and I are gonna go play some gin. I was gonna give you a kiss on the cheek, but you were turned this way, and it would be super weird if I was like, <laughs> Here, you can give me a gin. Yeah. Thanks, Mom. So, should I this, this is for great. your- Yeah, 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 yeah. thank okay. you. Okay. And this, okay. if you wanna wipe that bottle off, cause it's a little missy. So <laughs> My, so my mom is the mom who like gives you two napkins, one that's dry well, and one that's wetted, uh, this just is, a little, this so is, that you can. Yeah, this is kind really. of really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is amazing. That quilt on the screen is I awesome. I know, I know. It's from the Lazansky book, one of the Lazansky uh, books. So what's going on right there? It's a backwards end. Look at that. I know, but what about that? Ooh. I don't What's know. Going well, we're eight? gonna look at it. We're gonna look at it. That's the, the first quilt okay. we look at. It's our. Did, so you when go, did you start? Eight? Just just now. Yeah. yeah well, so I'm go not, home and turn I'm on not, the show. I just might do that. You should come over. Come over if you want to hang out. No, I gotta go sit down. Go sit down. I'm tired. I love you. Bye. Bye. Okay, everybody. Marianne Fonts. I will. Amazing, you never know what's gonna happen. So yeah, so I'm in Iowa and uh, I see, I, anyway, I see Kay and I see Michelle. Robin, thank you so much for, you gifted a subscription to Eva Little. Thank you so much for gifting a subscription. And I wanna thank Joyce for subscribing at tier two. You've been subscribed for, for nine months. That's so great, thank you so much. I see Calamity Cortez, I see Hope. Oh my God, I see Hope. I see people welcoming people. I see Jan, I see Qua Qua. Uh, Drink Wine and Solin subscribed at tier one. You've been subscribed for 11 months. Ma Mad Quilter, I'm so glad that you're here and you've been subscribing for, for, for four months or something at, at tier one, good, good heavenly days. It looks good on you. Um, oh, Ellerhold, it's great to see you back. See, I, you know, call it Hadidi. Calling the roll is hard because then if I miss someone, they're like, hey, why, you know, why didn't you say hello to me? But you know, we, we, we We'll get there. I see Kate and um, thank you uh, to Stitch and Dev for subscribing. You've been subscribed for 18 months, um, and all the subscribers and everybody who's out there. I really appreciate you. Okay, so we start the show with a new. Is that Mark? Is that Mark? Flying piece. Hi. Um, we start the show with a with a quilt behind me at, uh, uh, every time. And it's a good way to jump off into into the show. Tonight is a great show. We've got um, at long last Amber Robles Gordon. We're going to take a look at her work. I think she's a very interesting artist. I think she's doing interesting things with the quilt as a form. We're going to look at. Um, did I, Steph? I meant to ask you. Did I play that one minute thirty second video on space dying? I think we talked about. I I think we talked about it, but I don't think you did. I don't think we played it. I, I'm gonna play it. It's it's a minute and thirty seconds about space die, like like what that means. Like, cause I was like, do you have you know what is space dying? And you're like, oh yeah, you know, it's this thing. And 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 I got an I got some email in my inbox from a fabric company that's doing space dyed fabric for quilters, and I was like, what does that mean? And so we're gonna watch a one minute and thirty second video about what that is. Some of you will know. Um, and then uh, I've got some quilts from the Minneapolis Institute of Art. 
amazing. They have some amazing quilts. And then I, I did some more, um, I did some sound work and some editing on the, a piece of the New England Quilt Museum trip, uh, Pam Weeks taking us through the portable patchwork exhibit. So it, uh, I showed some of it before, but the sound was not the best and the resolution was not the best and now I've got it better. So we'll see some of that. Anyway, that, you know, it's gonna be a good time. And it starts with this first quilt. And so, Minneapolis, yeah! Hey, you know what, I'm not sure. It Liz, whoops, hold on now, hold on now. It Liz, um, it's great to see you and, and I'm gonna give you a welcome basket in the chat because don't, please don't uh, take it the wrong way if I'm just being thick, you know, but sometimes I don't get, I don't catch everybody who's in the chat chatting. And so maybe I haven't said hi to you and you've been here a long time. Damn, I'm looking at the wrong camera. Uh, but I just wanna welcome you to the show uh, because yeah, I see you. Uh, you love a twin city, Sherlock, indeed. Okay, so this quilt behind me is this quilt. And you know we love a backwards N. And uh, there are people, there are nerds among us who are doing research projects and really digging into like one specific thing in the quilt world, history or culture world of quilts. And <clears throat> I mean, I'm just waiting, listen, this is my solemn vow. Oof, God. Robin and Steph, Susanna, you better be taking mark notes of my solemn vows that I make on this show. I'm like, here is my solemn vow. <laughs> you know, but one year from now or whatever. But like, if nobody is like, I'm genuinely gonna do research on the backwards end phenomenon, like, I'm gonna give it some time because I feel like folks are gonna, somebody's gonna step up and be like, no, 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 enough speculation, enough hearsay. I am gonna be the person, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna really, really try you know for the next six months i'm going to do everything i can to contact whatever i'm going to i'm going to start researching the backwards end phenomenon and yvonne oh my god it's yvonne yvonne i was talking about you today i mom and i were talking about you again today you come up a lot um anyway uh yes we were so um so so yeah so it's great to see you thank you for subscribing at tier three you've been subscribed for 13 months or 21 months I, a long time thank you so if, no, if nobody is like, I'm gonna take on the backwards end thing, I, I gotta do it. Somebody's gotta do it. Because there are, if you're new here, you know, the, the N in the Quilt Nerd logo is backward. This was a great suggestion from a Quilt Nerd, SJ Pepper. Wherever you are today, my dear, maybe you're in the worker lunch, I don't know. But you're great and uh, you had a great suggestion, you know, put the backwards N in the Quilt Nerd logo. And, and, and quilts in the 19th century, uh, from time to time, quilts that had text on them had, the, the, the end was backwards. And there are these, I, there's, you know, maybe it was dyslexia, people say, that led to this. Maybe it was a mistake and nobody d changed it, you know? The quilt maker was like, nope, I'm done, which I find very, I, I may, every, sure, some of them, but like, but no, um, dyslexia is interesting, um, you know, in terms of like illiteracy or something. Now we have seen quilts, uh, Helen Fleenor being an example of a, a quilt maker who was in East Tennessee who made <clears throat> extraordinary quilts with a lot of biblical writing and, and Bible verses on her quilts embroidered and she was not a reader. She couldn't read, she was illiterate. She was not able to read, but she copied down the words from the Bible because they were there and she copied them down even though she couldn't actually read them, she knew them by heart. Anyway, you know, it is possible that you've, that you've got that kind of situation going on, but then, but you're copying the letters then, so you would see an N. But we have more than a few examples um, of the backwards N, but nobody really knows. And there's, even if we don't find out what it is, damn, sorry, even if you don't find out what it is, just some information actual evidence of some kind has got to be out there. And here is a quilt from 1896. Both of the ends are backwards. Now you explain that to me. That they, I'm looking at you, I'm like, you explain that to me, Stephanie Cake. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's been, there's been a lot of, I think a lot of nerds that have thrown out ideas. Yeah. And, uh, I know Word, Word and Bird Nerd has been trying to do a little bit you of have. around oh, good. Um, one theory that I have, that may be totally off 
um, is, you know, if all of these quilts were kind of happening around the same time, you know how they taught different, like, forms of handwriting, like, what was considered, like, the yep. hand of the day? Yep. And if you kind of, if you kind of soften the, the point on the, the right-hand side of the backwards N, it becomes lowercase n, in cur like, in some of these cursives. Oh, so, oh, you know, and I interesting. Don't, I, is, is that as plausible as lots of people were dyslexic? Lots hmm. of people made mistakes. I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, I see what but, you mean. You know, and and I, I think it is interesting, probably to look at the time period. That I feel like that maybe is a clue. Are these concentrated within a particular time period, yep. or are they spread out across? You know. Decades, decades and decades. I mean, I know this is 1896. Is I, off the top of my head, I can't remember <laughs> the rest of them. I can't either. And well, but well, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. The N, hold on. I know her name because it's, uh, what is it? Um, who was the, the Veranos Elizabeth Holmes? <laughs> this woman is, uh, also has the name Elizabeth Holmes. Um, Holmes. Yeah, this, this quilt right here is actually the quilt that um, inspired uh, or, or that led to the the backward end you know it's it's the, this quilt was the quilt that I gave the designer of the quilt nerd logo when I was like I want let's do the backwards end in quilt nerd this is the one and this is 1869 you see Abraham Lincoln is a great quilt I mean, let's, I mean, let's just appreciate the whole thing. Can you believe this thing? This thing, come on. Come on, it's so amazing. Um, Abraham Lincoln, Grant, um, Colf uh, President Colfax, D.R. Colfax, something. Um, some of them, they used in Union Forever, 1869. So when was our other, when was that quilt just that we were just looking at? 18, was it 1898? Okay, okay. 1896, 1898? A little bit later. So, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and this one, though, has right. ends going the right direction. So, right, like, is it, exactly, <laughs> exactly. It has one, is it one that goes the right direction? Two. Yeah, 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 yep, 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 yep. So here, there isn't, in Lincoln, it's backward. Union. Backward. God, it's so it's so cool. Oh my god, it's oh union. Look, it's backward. Both are backward in union. And then Yeah, I mean it's and, and and here's a backwards S. Elizabeth Holmes. See what she's saying is this quilt was made 1869 by Elizabeth Holmes in her eight, 68th year, which I mean, God. This person I just can't stand. I mean, she's so so cool, but the the S is backwards. That I can understand. S's are impossible. If you've ever like cut out an S to try to, it's like, if you cut it out three times and you're like, you know what, it's still wrong. I don't know what. I don't know. I'm just gonna sew it down. You know, I understand that. But there are there any are there any ends that are? Yeah, there is. There are. I think two ends that are correct. Okay. Like going the correct way. Okay. Um. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, I, th I honestly, I think all of the theories are right. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know, I, yeah. I think there's the possibility of all of them being right. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's so interesting that it's just specifically the end. And you know what? Yeah. Probably somebody who um, maybe like a teacher or a therapist or, or mm -hmm. something that works with people that have like dyslexia. Yeah. And, you know, other like visual processing um, things with text. I mean, I don't know what the right words are here. Sure, yeah, yeah, somebody yeah. Somebody has got to have some yeah, theory yeah. about this that's outside the quilt world, so I mm, wonder. It's great. Nerd, do you know somebody in that field? Such a great line of questioning. And you know what? I, I think that, that exact thing that you just did, Stephanie, is like that's something that I never understood about like research or studying stuff. Research, it's research, because it's like an investigation. And like that kind of creativity with like how to go about getting the story or getting the information, that's that's why I'm getting it, why I like this stuff. It's like, 
oh, like, you, you know, like what you just did is like, oh, I, I want to talk to like a speech pathologist or, or, you know, some, or a linguist or something like that. And it's like, when you really start to look at something, looking at it from all angles, it's so much fun and it's so creative. You, you come up with creative ways to like get at a, get at the truth of the thing. I, you know what I mean? Just what yeah, you did. And, you know, it might be something like thoroughly insane, like, yeah. Uh, people who have like mercury poisoning have the N center of yeah. their brain alphabet like damaged. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Seriously. And then it's like, oh my God, like what if, I mean, Word and Bernard, be that, keep that energy, right? Like be the person who's like, we know why it's backwards. And also, you know, it can help, you know, this particular other thing in society. I don't know. You know, I don't know. So, so yeah, awesome. I love that. So here's what we know about the quilt. And this comes from uh, Peace by Mother. Is that right, Steph? It was Peace by Mother. Okay, so Peace by Mother, published by um, Jeanette Lazansky. There was these short, a, a few, a few books published by this person, Jeremy Landau. No, 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 that's not true. Anyway, anyway, they're beautiful books. And here's what we know uh, about this quilt that was published in a in a book called Peace by Mother, which you can get through our Abe Books affiliate link. We Get a few uh, dimes when you buy uh, these used dusty books that we talk about through our affiliate link. Um, the publisher says, quilt made by Mary Elizabeth Weber from Boiling Springs, Cumberland County, South Middleton Township, uh, Pennsylvania. Pieced and appliqued, solid colored and print cottons with print back and some padded work. Interesting. Appliqued, solid colored binding. 78 inch square with six to seven stitches per inch. Okay, signed and dated Orin Landis. Oh, signed and dated Orin Landis, 1896, collection of Ruth Snyder. Is that signed by, like did Orin Landis make themselves a quilt that's like, this is my name, I was here. Or is it, is this considered the signature? But it's the quilt is made by Mary Elizabeth Weber. Oh, so oh, oh right, Lent right. Orin Landis designed it, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's possible. I mean, you know what? Maybe Orin Landis was like the hot bachelor, and he said, "Hey, Mary or Elizabeth, Mary Elizabeth, can you make me this quilt? Yeah. I need to advertise for a, a, a lass to come court." I mean, it's like a billboard. It's like a quilt billboard. <laughs> it's it's the personal ad in. In pencil in in uh, yeah, it's boiling like, hey, springs. Warren is yeah. looking for some ladies, and look at me. I know how to put my ends and everything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Eat at Joe's, like the neon sign, right? It's great. It's great. Um, and my mo and mom, when she was just passing through, she did see. This is an interesting moment. What is that about? Isn't that cool? Like the eight is bro is broken. I just about said the eight is broke. You know, the eights broke. <laughs> um, but that is very cool. Does it happen again? Look at the look at this. The font. Are you kidding me? Look at the top and the bottom of that stroke of the D. And M N. This dip, like it's like a leaf, you know, like some kind of like floral moment. It's so beautiful. Anybody who like draws and does lettering or anything, this is this one. This font is gorgeous. And please keep the backwards N, but, but this, yeah, like the A, just, it's so I good. I think they were probably trying to copy that kind of text that was really, that big, like, billboard text that was really popular mm. then, like, you think, like, the circus, like, Ringling Brothers oh, Circus. Oh, yeah. Really, like, woodblock, I think that's probably what they were trying to emulate. That's good, that's very good, yes. Yes, 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 oh, that'd be fun, that'd be a fun, here's another, we play the sound when there's a research project to be done. That's another one, the font on quilts of a period, right? Compared to the fonts in the advertisements and in the culture at the time. Fabulous. So that's our intro quilt, man. 1896, Orin Landis. And I mean, forget the, ge the genealogy part of it. I mean, that's like, wow, easy. I mean, that's fun. Okay, so here's one of the quilts we're gonna look at from the Minneapolis Museum, Institute of Art, Minneapolis Institute of Art. Super fun, super traditional, awesome. I have a number of those. And then we have some video from the New England Quilt Museum. But before we do that, a few weeks ago, I'm sorry it's taken so long to get back to this person, but things just kept coming up. And I was at the board meeting and then we, anyway. So 
uh, by the way, I didn't mention it last week. I got a plaque. I got a plaque. I mean, I don't want to be like, hi, everybody, I'm back, and I got a plaque. Uh, but I did. I got this plaque, and it was really fun. It was really cool. And I took a picture of it, and I didn't bring the – I didn't pull the picture up. But, like, the reason I mentioned the plaque is just because I got it because it was my last year on the board, six years, you know, at the International Quilt Museum, you know. And I, I really – it was really emotional. You know, I really cried, you know, at dinner. I mean, you, you imagine that, me crying, you know. But but I, I really did, and uh, it was really – and Carolyn Maslumi finished her board term. She was on for three years, and – and and so we both got the plaque, you know. So so it was like you know, but but it was really special. I'm never. I don't have a. I, the last time I got like some kind of. I mean, it's like a statuette, you know. The last time I got some sort of like physical marker of a thing, it was like when I like won state speech contest for the Optimist Club, like in the middle school, like down the street. Seriously, like I got like a wooden plaque. Um, but it was really special, and, and, and I mention it, not because I want to be congratulated for my plaque, but because it was my last year, and I don't know if I mentioned that, is that it was six years on the board of the Quilt Museum, and the reason we didn't look at this particular content last week is because I was kind of, you know, that content was fresh, and I was talking about that. But yeah, I got a plaque. It's funny. Congratulations. Funny Thanks. All of the nerds are very excited oh, for you. And you know what? I would submit that this plaque is like, I don't know, the T and the EGOT of the quilt world. The T EGOT. The T, wait, T and the EGOT? Oh, the T the in the EGOT. EGOT. I don't know. It's like a Tony, right? I don't know. Yeah, it's like a Tony. I, I'll go, Listen, I'll go for it. You want to see it? It's easy to find. It's right here. Hang on one second. It's fun. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's real fun. Okay, hang on. Library. It's like right here. And, and it's clear. It's a clear plaque. I've got so much fun stuff to show you guys from that trip. Um, it's a clear plaque, so it was kind of hard to take a picture of, so I had to, like, get under my desk. Um, anyway, well, I might not be able to find it. No. Oh, yeah, here. Okay. All right. Here it is. Here it is. I'll show you right now. Here we go. Whoop. Nope. Here. All right. Here's my plaque. Okay, so so that's on the floor of my office next to the filing cabinet. Can you see my reflection? I'm on my side, on the ground, <laughs> photographing it with my phone. That's my plaque, and I'm very proud of it, and it is in my office. And, and, and it's, the, it's the thing in my office that looks the most like an adult actually works there. Otherwise, there's quilts hanging on, like there's a quilt on the whiteboard. There's like... I don't know, streaming gear, like I'm a teenage boy, you know? And then there's this lovely plaque that I had to photograph on the floor because it's clear. It doesn't show up against anything. Anyway, thank you for letting me share my plaque. <laughs> thank you <laughs> for letting me share my plaque. Okay. Why was it my last year on the board? Because I served two consecutive terms of three years. Or no, 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 I served three terms of two years, I think. No, 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 I don't know what it is. I don't know, but I maxed out. <laughs> they were like, well, Anyway, they were like, you, could, you should much come like back. The, much like the presidency, that's you right. do not get lifetime right. in the that's office. Right. That's right. That's right, exactly. It's a, not a King George situation, uh, unfortunately. But, um, but, but actually, um, you know, I, I don't want to be, you know, someone else should, should do it. You know, there's, there's so many wonderful people. I should I get the hell out of there, you know. Let's You're working it. on the next stage of your EGOT, which is the board <laughs> yeah. at AQSG. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? What, what else is out there? Like, what can I add? Make sure that Carrie Dell sees that if she's not in the lurker oh, lounge tonight, right. make sure she sees it because, when you know, whenever your, your term there is up, you want that's an right. equal plaque. That's right. I want to, I want to, yes, I want some kind of, um, I'd like a memorial arch, actually. <laughs> you know what? There, I, I, I know I'm gabbing too, too much tonight, but it's so good to see everybody. But yeah, I, I, I was like, you know, gravestone, you know, or memorial arch. What if there was like an archway and you had to drive through it? You know, <laughs> it was like, <laughs> here, here lies Mary Fonz. Anyway, it'd be fun. Uh, thanks everybody for saying that. That's real nice. Okay. So at long last, because that board meeting is done and all that's done, I can finally return to this person, Amber Robles Gordon. Now, the, the, I showed it just a little bit, you know, two weeks ago. Um, and what I said about it, and I looked over at Cake on my monitor, <laughs> which is the phone. Um, I was like, this is a new shape. I feel like there's something that this person who's making this quilt, and it's a quilt, and so is, so are these. They're quilted 
pieces. I feel like there's something new here. And it's, it's, it's like original. That she's, she's doing something with like scale and shape and texture that to me feels fresh. And I was very interested in that and interested in her work. So let's, let's learn a little bit about this person, okay? Amber Robles Gordon. And as I read from this uh, article, um, I am going to, you know, scroll through some of these pictures um, and tell you what I've learned. And, and this show is an is a, um, exploration, not a presentation. I, I, I learn along with everybody, and, and I don't pretend to know things, and I don't know anything. So, so this is from a review of the show uh, in 2021 from Art Blog. Amber Robles Gordon's anti-colonial quilts and personal histories at the at American University Museum at the Katzen Center. So wait a minute, where is this from? Where Katzen Center? Okay, I don't know. We're gonna find out. All right. So I'm gonna zoom in and, and show these works as I talk about this artist stuff. This is by Andrea Kirsch, December seventeenth, twenty twenty one. Um. Amber Robles Gordon's first grade classmates in Arlington, Virginia, bullied her for speaking Spanish. So she learned to speak to her mother in English. It wouldn't be until middle age that the artist finally visited her mother's birthplace in Puerto Rico. Successions, Traversing U.S. Colonialism, her solo exhibition at the American University Museum at the Katzen Center ooh, ooh, in Washington, D.C. Okay, this is going to be important. So it's in D.C. Some of you may have known that, okay? Uh, this was the product of that initial trip. And look at this. I mean, this is... Very, very cool. Uh, was the pro I mean, her, her, the, the, the talent that I see is really fabulous. So, was the product of that initial trip, okay, to Puerto Rico, and her return for a six weeks res six week residence on the island in 2020. Okay. By the way, what I'm showing you is pictures of her work that I took, you know, that I took from different um, you know, her website and different articles about her. So these weren't necessarily the pieces in the show I'm reading about, but I felt like this was a good overview of who she is and so so I'm this is all you know this is quilt nerd you see images you hear words you learn things you go and explore yourself okay this exhibition presented two bodies of work the play uh, the first place of breath and birth um is a series of 10 vibrant collages on canvas wait hold on now hold on nope no, no. okay quilts okay here we here here quilts of pointed uh, anti-colonial critique. Interesting. And you know, one thing that's so important about this show, that I want for this show, is we look at everything. Really everything. As, as best I can do. We look at a quilt from 1896 with backwards ends on it. We look at contemporary work, what what people are doing with the quilt as a form, the subject matter with what they're with which they're dealing. We look at we're going to look at a, a minute and thirty second video of space dyeing technology. I mean, like, I, I'm curious about the sorry, I'm curious about the world. That's what I'm curious about. So quilts give us a way to do that. We look at everything. Welcome to Quilt Nerd. Okay. Um, in, if the collages back to the author, if the collages capture Robles Gordon's connection to her ancestral culture in forms of personal spiritual reflection, the second part of the exhibition, 2021 responded to her developing political understanding of Puerto Rico's position as a U.S. territory. Look at this quilt. This is great. This is called D.C. Political Welcome to the District of Colonialism. Wow, 2021. Um, fascinating. Okay, I'm going to zoom in. The quilting around the edges is very interesting, the border. Okay. The works are a public forum in which to teach, to encourage discussion, to heal and to begin building a congregation of territorial residents. Six large double-sided applique quilts hung throughout the high ceiling gallery. The installation which gave its name to the exhibition was titled Successions Traversing U.S. Colonialism. The quilts include dense references to histories that have yet to be acknowledged and the dark underside of U.S. power. 
Their format entangles the conventionalized emblems of history and patriotism with the domestic craft of quilting. I mean, this is very interesting technique here. I don't know exactly what she's doing. I did my best to get high-res images to show you, but these aren't amazing, so we can't, I mean, I can see that that's quilted, but I don't know exactly, like, what I'm looking at, like, in terms of, like, the piecing. And she's doing collage, too, so I'm not totally sure. Again, and, and she's on YouTube a fair amount doing interviews and things, so, and she has a Wikipedia page, too. So she's, she's, she's making moves. Um, okay, on one side of each quilt, Robles Gordon addresses political history. Okay, I read that. No, no, no. Uh, to, uh, with references to each of the U.S. territory's flag or seal, as well as to the exploitation of its indigenous people for medical experimentation, military supports, and economic interests. On the other side, there's some hanging. Okay, yeah, look at this. Uh, on the other side, um, where am I at? Okay, she constructs an altar dedicated to healing the damage of historical exploitation and the racism which underpins it. Hang on, let's go over here. Oh, yeah. Is this a quilt? That might be a collage. Hang on. Yeah, here's a quilt. Okay. Guam. So this is so this is a quilt for Guam in this context. Both sides bear central medallions. Here we can see that they are greatly enlarged versions of the circles in the collages. Okay, and make references to the circle as a foundational religious image and form of celebration, to healing circles and ceremonial dancing. Wow, it looks almost glazed like a calamanco or something. You know, it looks old school in that way. The healing altars are constructed with the same spiky geometric patterning that Robles Gordon used in the collages and all have hieratic, hieratic symmetrical designs. Here they suggest, suggest abstract figures of deities and their patterning makes reference to a variety of Afro-diasporic and non-Western decorative histories seen in painting, textiles, and ceramics. God, look at this section. That's just, it's killer. Um, although painted, oh, okay, they're painted. Although painted, they appear to be drawings in chalk on black backgrounds. Yeah, I think we saw that with this, right? Chalk and black backgrounds, that's what it looked like to me. Um, which suggests religious images. Oh, here she is, she's great. Um, and, er, 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 religious images in various cultures which are intended to be temporary. Okay, just a few more here. Um, the timing of Robles Gordon's residency in Puerto Rico. Oh, look at her studio. Oh my God, I love studio pictures. That's so great. Um, the timing of Robles Gordon's residency in Puerto Rico reinforced her understanding of the disparity between U.S. government support to the island after the overwhelming damage from Hurricanes Maria and Irma in 2017 and the level of disaster relief Americans have come to expect on the mainland. Shouldn't zoom in too close because you need perspective in this studio. This understanding in turn led to the artist's interest in the U.S. territories as a group, areas under United States dominion with the highest percentage of poverty, where the government has exploited resources and cited strategic military bases with little concern for the inhabitants, all people of color who are largely only nominally U.S. citizens, the territories function rather as U.S. colonies. Puerto Rico, Guam, American Samoa, this is a great one, um, the Virgin Islands and the Northern Mariana Islands, oh, Mariana, sorry, Mariana Islands are unfamiliar to many on the mainland United States. Few Americans know that their residents are U.S. citizens with the right to vote, although they lack full representation in Congress. Robles Gordon included Washington, D.C., her current home, see I said D.C. was going to come back, uh, among the territories because its residents, too, fall under U.S. Uh, U.S. jurisdiction, but have no fully empowered congressional representative. The last paragraph says, Robles Gordon used her childhood bullying as a spur to understanding her own cultural uh, traditions, and it is characteristic of her long-developed career of teaching and producing art that she didn't respond to the history of ter ter uh, territorial exploitation with rage, but with honesty, offering understanding, teaching, and healing as a foundation on which to advocate for social justice in the outlying regions of the United States and in powerless communities internationally. The sense of spirituality and turning toward a better future pervades her work, 
as much as her person personally developed language of forms and patterns, use of repurposed materials, passionate polychrome, cool, and fusion of visual traditions. Cool. I mean, I, I love, I like that. That this was a good, well-written article. I think um, the sense of spirituality and turning towards a better future pervades her work as much as her personally developed language of forms and patterns. That's what it is. That's what this feels like to me. This is like a personally developed, you know, form, uh, language of form and pattern. I don't know. It's just, you know what I'm saying? It's good. I think I like it. I guess that's it. <laughs> I just like it. Uh, that's all I can say, really. I think it's successful. You know, as, as you've been describing, yeah. you know, her, her approach, I keep thinking, and I, I don't want anybody to think, like, I'm trying to compare her work. Sure. But it's got that, like, Basquiat feel to it. Like, oh, yeah. She's, she's Interesting. She's got these certain, like, mm -hmm. language that she's using in these quilts. Mm -hmm. um, and that mixed media aspect of it, mm -hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's very powerful. And, and yeah, I encourage, oh, and there's a PDF I shared with staff that one of the things you, you, you get if you're part of the Quilt Nerd subscriber pool, um, you, get, you get to join the Discord server. And that's like, it's like a Facebook group on steroids or something, I don't know. But it's, it's great, and, and like, there's this great PDF uh, that I found about her work and, and an exhibit, and I shared that with Steph, and so Steph will post that in the Discord so you can read about it. Um, yeah. I mean, I did give you that, right? Did I? <laughs> Maybe I did. Okay, good, good. Um, so yeah, so I like her. I like her, and there's videos to watch, and there's all kinds of things. She's she's a she's a big deal, you know. And and I love this is the PDF, right? Um, I love I love I love seeing what people do with the form. It's very interesting. It's it continues to change and morph, and it's just fantastic. Um, okay, so see what should we do I mean okay Steph you're gonna do a thing well okay so we're gonna take a cake break but I think I should do the Minneapolis let's do some Minneapolis quilts because they are so cool there's not too many of them but I found that the Minneapolis Institute of Art has a wonderful quilt collection it's not huge but they have some really great stuff and and I I, I keep tabs on this stuff you know this is my job right as the quilt nerd uh tour director, you know? Um, and so it's like, oh yeah, the, music, the Minneapolis Institute of Art, let's look at a few other quilts. So we're gonna do that tonight and then we'll take a cake break. And Cake has an announcement uh, about an event tomorrow. And um, so we'll look at these quilts and then we'll talk to Cake and I'll take a bathroom break. And then we'll, we'll come back and we'll watch some video. I keep looking at the wrong camera, sorry. Camera one, camera two. Um, all right, yes. And I was seeing somebody said up there, somebody said, Rock Dog, Rock Dog 12 Spikes Mom said lots of veterans are from Puerto Rico. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and we thank them for their service, you know? Do they get thanked as much, you know, as anybody else? I mean, that's, a, that's a, a crime, you know? If they don't, like, oh my God, like ama amazing. Um, oh, sorry. Okay, so yes, so here we go. Let's let's take a look at some of these quilts. Thank you. I, sometimes I wish that I could just be in the chat, like as a viewer, you know, someday to just like watch the show and just be in the chat, because I, I can't I can't do both sometimes. So, some live streamers are really good at just like chat and the screen and chat and the screen. And, uh, but it's tough. The show is pretty visually heavy for the host. Okay. So let's look at this, this quilt, look at this thing. It's, it's faded. I think we can, we can agree that these, this, was, this fabric was not this sort of slightly depressing brown originally, probably green, <laughs> probably a green, but it was a fugitive dye. <gasps> fugitive dye, oh no. I always picture the Hamburglar, you know, when I hear that term, fugitive dye. <laughs> like, oh. but it just, you know, it's a dye that didn't, wasn't color fast, you know. Um, the red was obviously, maybe, turkey red. So it was color fast, which is very exciting for this quilt maker. But unfortunately, the green did not last. This is called Cherry Tree or Tree of Life. It's at the Minneapolis Institute of Art. It was made in the 1860s. It's 85 by 80 inches. And I'm going to tell you anything else I know about it, but before I do, I mean, look at these exuberant 
cheerful little tulips just bursting from bursting from the lower half and then also the gri okay the quilting the grid is very very precise i mean i think we're seeing some pencil like a pencil mark there maybe but um but then you have this look at that <laughs> it's like i'm gonna do a feather <laughs> i'm gonna do a feather right there and i'm gonna do a feather right there to offset the tree and everything else is this grid. It's so interesting. I love it. And then the little the little buds are embroidered green. It would have been really cool in green. I like their wiggly their wiggly little yeah. like tendrils that are yeah. holding them. Yeah, it's so great. It's so great. Do you think they're like cherries? Like I maybe it's like supposed to be a cherry tree. I think so. And that's what the Minneapolis Museum calls it is like cherry tree or tree of life. I think that's what they said. Um, this whoops nope oh good to see oh, oh we have some intel oh, oh, we have oh. intel about the mary the mary elizabeth webber quilt oh, oh great Lauren landis was her grandson it, it, she, she made that me? quilt when he was two and his name was Orin landis really who did that oh my mom's back in the thing uh in the chat who said this who Quack, who, who? Quack, 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 cat found it Quack, Quack, cat you know what that's when we play romey and michelle's Soundbite. That's what I do. I invented post-its. Yeah, yeah, you invented post-its. That's how smart you are. That's awesome. That's so good. How did you? I don't. I don't understand you people. How did you? How you do it? Amazing. It was an, it was an ancestry search. An ancestry search. Orin Landis. Beautiful. I love. You know these. Listen, if you're a grandma, making. You know, Grandma Carpenter. You know, making these quilts for the grandkids with their names, just like this is for my grandchild, and your name is this, and this is a rainbow for you, and this is your name with a backwards N. I mean, like, don't hold back, because these quilts that we see from these grandparents are, like, fabulous. Okay. Okay, so what is this? Let me get to this thing. Mom, it's great to see you. It's great to know you're one block away. I'm glad you're back in the chat. Okay. Hang on, where is, come on now. Okay, here we go. Cherry tree or tree of life quilt. Okay, 1860s, I mentioned that. Um, all that we know, and mom, I saw you say, yeah, imagine if this were green instead of this terrible khaki. It would be magnificent. We don't know the maker. Um, oh, well, I guess that's about it. Oh, it's interesting. Oh yeah, I meant to tell you. So this image is in the public domain and the Minneapolis Muse uh, Institute of Art is uh, very generous and cool with their images if they're in the public domain then oh i could send you the link stuff to send people there i should do that um if you uh that so, so they're very high res right they're very high res so if something's in the public domain and you want to use it for a thing you can use it for a thing you know and where you can you should credit the people you know credit the museum but you know, if you need, if you if you want to make a T-shirt with this quilt on it, you can do that. And what's really wonderful about the Minneapolis Institute of Art is because that image is public domain. And you got to read the stuff. You know, don't be like Mary Thompson. I can use it. <laughs> read the stuff. Make sure. Okay, but these images that I found, most of them were like six thousand DPI. That, that you don't. I mean, that's as high res as you can get. So if you want to make a thing with this tree on it, you know, you're going to have to have something that high res or it's going to look terrible. I'm not telling you to go out and like, I don't know what you're going to do. It's not my, it's not my problem. You know what? <laughs> but it's, it's really cool when these, when these museums, my point is that when these museums or these entities are able to do it and have these public domain images, when they offer you, when they, uh, you know, allow you to download a really high res image of it. I mean, it's like without a really great high res image of a public domain image, I mean, it's nice to have it, to know you're not going to get sued by Getty Images because you show it on your show, like Quilt Nerd or something. But, you know, if you really are an artist and you want to, like, work with an image that's in the public domain, it, it doesn't help very much unless you can have a quality image of it. And so it's awesome when people can do that. And I understand it takes infrastructure to be able to do that, and you have to have servers that can handle such things, and I know that. But, yeah, the, the Minneapolis Institute of Art, man, they're, they're, they're crushing it. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Carla Running Horse. Wow. Carla Running Horse made this quilt in 1991. It is, uh, 
it is a star quilt, as we can see. I liked it because the sateen, you know. This is not in the public domain, by the way, this image of this quilt. But this like sateen fabric is, is awesome. Um, that's pretty much why I picked it. It's really cool. Um, and, oh yeah, that's what I can do. Okay, but I can tell you, anything else I can tell you, I will tell you. And they also have a fair amount of, uh, of information for each quilt when they can. Um, not much more on this. It's 89 by 79. Um, cotton polyester fill, sorry. Co cotton polyester fill. Uh, Carla Running Horse was Lakota. Um, or is, I'm not sure if she's still living. We don't know that. But yeah, yeah. Cotton polyester fill satin. Satin, so it's not uh, sateen. Did I say sateen? I don't even know if I know if that term well enough. Oh, this is interesting. This is a very famous G's Ben quilt. It, it's uh, Lola Petway. It was made in the 1970s, and I'm pretty sure that this is some of the Sears corduroy, I think, the, the Freedom Quilting Bee. Try to not go into that whole story, but 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 the Freedom Quilting Bee in G's Bend area in Alabama in the 1970s had a had a gig with Sears, and Sears sent them fabric and material, and they made quilts for Sears department store, um, and it was this fascinating moment in the history of that area of the country. Amazing, yeah, I'm pretty sure. And so this so this is Sears uh, fabric, Sears corduroy, and 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 this is I, I mean I see this quilt. This has been published a lot, and then it belongs to the Minneapolis Institute of Art, which is very cool. Um, also not in the public domain, so don't get excited. Uh, that one is definitely um, copyright, copyrighted. And so it should be. I mean, this is like, it's very recent anyway. But yeah, you can see this corduroy. Amazing. Can you hear that band? Can you hear like music off in the distance? You can't, can you? There's like there's a there's a band playing like on the square. There's like a Harley Davidson rally or something. Oh God, I don't know. God, the word rally. No, just... I, I can't hear it. So. <laughs> Whether it's a high school pep rally or any kind of rally, I'm just like, oh God, like what is what's the rally? What are you rallying for? What's what's going on? Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's I can hear it, but I don't. If you can't hear it, stuff, it should be okay. Anyway. Um, how do you know if it's in the public domain or not? Kitty Hannah, that's a great, a great question. Um, I think it is a cover band, Molly. I'm, I don't know. I don't want to say anything bad because, you know, it's the, it's the internet. And if I'm like, this band is terrible, then somebody would be like, you know what, Mary Fonz, let me tell you something about your opinions. How dare you have one? Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I can't hear it well enough, Molly, to know. But it's, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know. I don't know what their approach is, <clears throat> but you know what? And this is sincere. I hope they are having a blast. I hope everybody out there is having a great time. I do sincerely. <clears throat> okay. Okay. This quote. So, so Kitty, Hannah. Sorry. Sorry. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay. Wait. So Kitty, I'm going to answer your question, but I did just see Ivana say, "Are you kidding? Uh, here, there are thousands and thousands of Harleys because this is a Harley town. It's a big deal." Yeah. I, Europe. Yeah. Europe north from us. And I mean, I've met some Harley guys that are like pretty awesome, you know, it, it, it's an individual thing, you know, <laughs> just judge, judge, judge as harshly as you want, but just judge an individual harshly, you know, not like the Harley people, right? Anyway, um, yeah, and maybe I should go out there after the show and like get a beer, you know, see what's, see what's up, see, see what's popping. Anyway, Kitty, um, your question about how do you know what's in the public domain on the museum, uh, on the uh, Minneapolis Institute of Art website, uh, it says very clearly on each image uh, of these quilts, this image is in the public domain. Got to say, Minneapolis, you're killing it because it's such an easy website to navigate. You have, you're clicking in there, right, Steph? You see that, right? The, it's just so, it's really easily navigable. navigable. So this one... God bless yeah. these institutions. They make researchers' jobs easier when you need a picture to right. use. Yes, yes. And if you ever want to, you know, publish something in a book, like even if it's like this is in the public domain, like contact. I'm not a copyright person, but you know, always, always, always communicate with people. If you're going to publish it in a book, hopefully your editor is going to be like, 
pardon me, <laughs> do you have permission for this? And then you go through the channels. But, but anyway, but yeah, yeah. And, and the Met, the Met uh, Museum has a really pretty amazing collection, you know, online. And it'll, it'll say public domain. And it'll give you the option to download it. And then it gives you all the rules about it. You know, you can use it for this. You can use it for that. There was a talk we had with Elizabeth Townsend Guard when I was in Lincoln the time before. Right, that was really fun. We talked about all that copyright stuff, and there's a book coming out you should absolutely get by Elizabeth Townsend Gard and Sydney Gard, all about copyright and quilting. So this quilt um, is f from China. This is, um, hang on, let me get this thing here. This is beautiful. So also from the Minneapolis Institute of Art, um, 45 by 31 inches. This is in the public domain, this image. Uh, and it's from, hang on now, it's cotton. And it's a date unknown. Date unknown. I mean, like, they didn't even try, which is kind of weird. I would like to know, like, some kind of, some date. But it says, um, culture, M-I-A-O. I'm not trying to be cute when I say it's, like, Meow, <laughs> meow, meow, meow. I'm not sure, uh, but it's so great. And so it's from the meow culture in China. Yeah, so, oh yeah, I was yeah. about to say that's a Chinese, like, yeah. maybe. Um, I know that there's, like, areas of China, and there's also, like, different um, ethnic okay. cultures in China. Sure, sure. So I'm wondering if it's one or the other. Sure, sure. Like a people, like a, like a people in China, like a particular. Okay, yep, yep, yep. Um, another another research project, right? These, these particular textiles in this particular part of the world. And, and I needed to look because there's this, this, there is a border, a black border. Like with the black in the background, I couldn't tell if the quilt ended at the color, you know, but no, there's a, there's this, this black border. Now that looks thicker than cotton. It's saying it's cotton. Well, it could be cotton, but it's a thick weave though. I mean, you can tell it's a thick, very thick, like a linen, coarse linen. Look at that needlework. I mean, what, what is even happening there? How does that, how does that work? What's, what is the stitch? Looks like a big chunky back stitch. Yes. Or it's couching. Oh, no, no, no. You know what? Oh, it's couching. Oh, it's couching. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I see. I thought those were holes, but no, those are. that's another thread. Okay. Yep. Couching. This is kind of an interesting clue. That's flannel. That's like a flannel. Well, a plaid. It's a plaid. Sorry. It's a plaid. But that's, you know, that's going to give us a, a hint of something in terms of 20th Sorry, century? Mary, if I may, yeah. everyone's asked, what is couching? <laughs> oh, yeah, please, please, Stephanie, so will you please? Couching is an embroidery, yes, it's an embroidery um, stitch, I guess, if you want to call it an embroidery method, where you take a thread or a yarn or something thick and yeah. you lay it down along the edge. Or I mean, it doesn't even have to be on the edge. It's just lay it down along a line, and then you take a smaller thread and like whip stitch over it. So if you look at these things, like the white, that white, that thick white and that thick purple outline, mm -hmm. that's like a, a big chunky yarn or something. Mm -hmm. And then you see those little black hash, hash marks. That's another thread that's like whip stitched it down. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is couching. Mm-hmm. Mm that's what I do. I invented post-its. Now, who out there you know what? Let's do a poll. I love a poll. If you want to participate in the poll, you got to do it on Twitch. Don't be scared. It's okay. You're okay. All right. I want to know who has done embroidery. Like, and and if you if you've done it once, if you're if you're a person who has been like, I want to try embroidery. Wait, wait, hold on. Would you would you would you is couching embroidery? Couching isn't embroidery. Is it? No, it is. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, it is considered part of uh, like embroidery stitches. You know, like I mean, out there, it's an outline technique. So, so I guess it's kind of a combination of things. But yeah, it's considered an embroidery thing. Yep. Um, also, gold work and black work would Ooh. use a similar kind of like if you know those really heavily crusted ornate like. Um, ecclesiastical things that you see like in the European museums that were like the saint's garb and all that stuff and it has this gold like 
lines mm -hmm. that's couched down like gold thread. Mm. Oh, yes, 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 mm -hmm. right. And it's like a technique that they actually teach it, I think, at the Royal School of Needlework. Oh. They have like a whole, like the school of gold work. <laughs> really? And they teach you how, yeah, and it is stitched on just like that. And it's like just rows and rows of it to make like these beautiful things. It's, what did you say, like, um, a certificate in gold work or something like that or like a degree in gold work what did you say <laughs> yeah you know they have these focuses that you can do apparently. a focus I, yeah I yeah know somebody who has yeah who has like a i don't know a degree a, di a diplomacy i don't know i don't know what they award you but somebody yeah. who went to the royal school of needlework and um she focused on embroidery but they do all kinds of things like you can i don't know like you can major in red work that's <laughs> you so know? cool like they have these like really intense focuses and they don't take like a ton of students yeah it's kind Amazing. of exclusive i think that's pretty awesome wow 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 yeah. that's like yeah it's yeah. like artisanship or you know um so the poll is live over here on twitch it's, the, it's at the top of the chat have you tried embroidery it's pretty simple yes no or no but i really want to or i'd like to um i feel that way i i want to do cross stitch which that's crazy. I should do a poll. Have you ever tatted lace? <laughs> Are you interested? I don't know. I feel like tatting lace is a whole, that's a whole different thing. Um, this, so this is another meow textile from uh, undated. It's undated. It's at the Minneapolis Institute of Art. And I just love this. So this is reverse applique, right? Right? And it's got this, this kind of stitch too. But it's not as, as decorative. I mean, there is a decorative stitch, but the colors aren't aren't the same. It looks almost like denim or boro, you know, in its way. L look over here, this wonderful red, but like this, the dye is really interesting. And, and this whip stitch, like, you know, fascinating. Hey, Ke Kellen McGuire, hi, Kelly, Kellen. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's good to see you. Mm. Mother Nature, hi, honey. Uh, quilting politic hello my darling oh you did try tatting you don't have the pa personality <laughs> the personality yeah maybe there should be like a an avengers like a version of the avengers that's like needle workers you know like the tatter you know like i mean you know what i mean like they're just different personalities it's true like the tatting and like embroidery cross stitch like what are these Taking different you people down with their their shuttle of uh yes i don't know yes <laughs> their shuttle of death I that's right that's right they're the crossover and they like it's like it's like spider-man only with lace and it's a woman <laughs> i don't know I don't know. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, okay, so, okay, da, 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 da. yes, yep. Okay, so just two other ones, and we're gonna take a quick break. Oh, it's already 9.15, but I, I, I've been chatting. I've, I've, got the, I've got the gab tonight. It's just good to be with y'all. Um, so this is beautiful, this is beautiful. Just go to the, the Minneapolis Institute of Art page and look at their collections and click on, you know, look, search for quilts. It's very easy to look at them and they're beautiful, you know, and some of these images are um, available for artists and thinkers and scholars and people to, you know, use in their lives, which I think is really great, you know, it's really great, it's really great. Um, this is called Touching Stars, 1934 to 1935. This is a low res picture, this is not in the public domain, do, do not take my word for any of this, look at the stuff, read the stuff. Don't come for me. Um, but this is a lower res, but it's gorgeous. Look at all those shades of blue. I mean, are you kidding me? Minnie A. Broderson Weber made this. 82 by 68. Stunning. I mean, just all those shades of blue. Crazy. And then this one, the last one. Woo! Talk about personality. Late 19th century artist once known. 68 by 51. So this is not large. It looks big. It's not big tumbling blocks and I put in my file name it's got a sugar cone border which it does this I would never make this I would never make it it's amazing I'm awe inspired I don't you know I don't want to do it I don't <laughs> no one asked me to I know that but good lord Whew. it's awesome it's amazing yeah that's a lot it's that's amazing a lot. but like And, and I think maybe even more impressive to me than the tumbling blocks is this border. It's so, that that angle is so intense of that spike. It, I don't know, I don't know. It's wild, it's just wild, it's wild. 
So yeah, take a look at it. Um, Ivana says, I've done multiple tumbling blocks. The sugar cone border never put them up for the, ch never, never been up for the challenge. I mean, if anybody can do it, Yvonne, I keep looking at the wrong thing. Um, you know, if you if anybody can do it, you can do it. So, like, maybe you'll love it. Like, maybe it's something to try. I feel like if you if you like sugar cone, that makes me I love those words together. Sugar cone, the sugar cone border. So I like, didn't know that's what that was called. It makes total sense. Makes sense, right? Yeah. And I'm sure you know it's probably called something else, but that's what I learned it as. And I think that like a sugar a, a, a ice cream cone quilt I mean, it doesn't have to be too on the nose but i mean how lovely to have like a strawberry ice cream kind of like ice cream cake quilt i'm just throwing out words i'm just free associating for your next project um with a sugar cone border it could be amazing it could be amazing i mean do you have like a just you know i'm just thinking of myself as a 13 year old girl or maybe no 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 maybe like a 10 year old girl an ice cream quilt I think I would like that. My 13 year old, no, my, my, no, my like nine or 10 year old self would like that. Okay, listen, it's time for a break. Cake, are you ready for this? Are you ready to take it over? I am. Okay, and you've got an announcement and I'm gonna be there on Sunday, so anyway. Oh, okay. Oh, and Dru Druid Godmother, babe, likes the psychedelic factor. Interesting, interesting. Oh, yes, yeah. Maybe, maybe. I does have that going on. I does have that going on, and I like the psychedelic factor, too. Interesting. Uh-oh. Hold on. All right, here we go. Cake. Oh, I got to cut my camera off. Okay. Uh, can everybody hear? Can people hear? Oh, God. I, I, I think so. Is the mic working? It is. Okay. I just was wondering because I had okay. mic, mic issues. Okay. Kenny, I don't know if I mentioned. I don't know if Kenny's here. I, I've been working on with your mic, and I can't figure it out. I don't know why. Okay. Take it away, Cake. Okay. Well, first of all, before I drop my drumroll, please, big news, um, I wanted to mention, since Marianne is here, to mention finishing school. Has anybody had a chance uh, who has signed up to check out those videos? I've, I've uh, listened to or watched. Uh, I was sewing while I was watching. Um, uh, episode one, and it was so great. It was so, so, so great. And I'll, I'll have to tell Mary that again when she comes back, but... Um, it's so wonderful. And if you haven't had a chance to look, please, please, this weekend, do it. Um, and if you haven't had a chance to buy it, keep an eye out. You know, they do those specials sometimes. So, um, you know, it's a good investment, I think. All right. So you guys ready for this? I went to, so I think I told you guys this on Tuesday. I went to the um, Maryland uh, Center for History and Culture on Wednesday. Um, to visit their library and they have a scrapbook there that is Dr. Dunton's scrapbook and it was kind of a I, I won't go into the story of how I discovered it was there it was kind of my own dumb I, I sort of should have known it was there and I didn't until recently anyway within his correspondence that I've been looking at now for months and months there are sometimes a mention of this document that he put together about um, Harlem Lodge, which was the private sanitarium he ran from like 1920 something until 1939 or 1940. Um, and I figured just listening to like the comments that some of the people he corresponded with about quilts, um, they would comment like, oh, thank you for sharing that booklet with me. Thank you, you know, th that gave me more information about, you know, what you do, where you work, you know, so on and so forth. But they kept talking about how creative it was or how how uh, whimsical or delightful it was. And I'm like, I cannot even imagine what this thing is. And I started looking for it. I couldn't find it anywhere. And lo and behold, there it is in that scrapbook at the Maryland Center for History and Culture, which is the Maryland Historical Society. He had donated it to them. And it is indeed a booklet about Harlem Lodge, but it's called Memoirs of Harlem Lodge. And it is written from the viewpoint of the sanitarium. <laughs> yes, you heard that right, you guys. <laughs> it is a memoir of a sanitarium written by the sanitarium. Um, Dun Dutton lists himself as the editor, <laughs> but we all know Dutton was really writing this thing. Um, it, is, it is interesting, it's a little odd, but it is so heartwarming and, and like, like wholesome 
um, I want to share it with you guys. And, you know, it's going to get a mention in my presentation at, at AQSG, at the seminar, but it's not such a big piece that, like, I don't think I, you know, like, I, I would need to hold it back. So tomorrow, I'm going to stream and I'm going to read it to you. It's, I estimate that it might take me about half an hour, 45 minutes to read it to you. It's, I want to say it's like 10 or so pages long. Um, and I am timing this because Kenny, who I have not seen tonight, <laughs> so I don't know if he's on here. Um, Kenny is streaming tomorrow night and I think he's doing some quilting. So I thought anybody who would like to join me on my channel and listen to a dramatic reading of Dr. Dunton's Memoirs of Harlem Lodge um, and then go raid Kenny's channel, then we shall do that. So it will be, I'm gonna stream at 7.30 Eastern. And Kenny is streaming at 9 p.m. Eastern. So I'll be 7.30 p.m. Eastern and you guys have to do your time zones. <laughs> I'm terrible at time zones. So 7.30 Eastern tomorrow night. Sunday. Yay! I'm oh, eating I salads. I can't wait. I hope you can join me. And if you can't join me, if you are not available, I will certainly leave it up so that you can watch the replay. <laughs> and it is, um, it's going to be something else, you guys. <laughs> so you read it all, right, um, Kate? I mean, yeah. What, what did you say? You, sorry. <laughs> I'm eating this salad. I'm so hungry. You've read it all, obviously, right? It's not that long. I have, yes, I have read it myself, and I've actually transcribed it because the pictures I had to take at the at the uh, library were kind of. Um, they basically don't let you just snap the pictures that I got to do at the at the uh, mm -hmm. Baltimore Museum of Art. Mm -hmm. I had to like it had to have this little um, clear overlay thing on all the pages if I took a picture, sure. and it, the scrapbook is not in great shape. Um, Dr. Dunn liked to make his own scrapbooks, so of course they maybe look at it in a cradle, so mm -hmm. it's not fully flat open. Mm -hmm. And so when you're trying to take pictures of things and hold this little clear overlay thing with their logo on it. <laughs> it mm -hmm. The pictures are terrible. So I made it easy on myself and I read it while I transcribed it. Great. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I'm going to have to, I guess, I don't know what the sound of a sanitarium's voice is. <laughs> because <laughs> I mean, this is, will all be in the voice of the sanitarium. There's no character other than the sanitarium. So I'll have to think about that. Maybe. I want to be respectful. Yeah. I also want to be fun and musical as, as it was, as was meant by the, the piece that he wrote. Maybe it's like the most <laughs> loving, like perfect creature that was ever, ever in existence, which is Snuffleupagus. Oh bird. Hello. <laughs> like I'm a safe, oh, baby. Like, oh, I'm, a yeah. safe I'm a safe place. Oh bird. I, I haven't done him in a long time, but you know, <laughs> Like, yeah, I'll just think I'll have to think about that. Um, yeah. Oh, somebody asked, what is Kenny's channel? Oh, yeah. Kenny is I K E N N E Y V. V is in Victor. So I K E N N E Y V. Um, but if you come follow me, if you come to my thing, I will raid Kenny and that'll put you right in there. That's right. So you can, you know, you don't have to follow him beforehand if you stick around for, with me. Did you drop the link to your channel, Steph, in the chat? Oh. <laughs> That would help, wouldn't it? Yeah, do that for sure. And, oh, sorry. And, um, yeah, that would be good. I need to get up in there. Good heavenly days. Um, yes. And who, oh, thanks, babe. Thank you so much. Nice. That's what I do. I invented post-its. Um, by the way, Flying Pieces, it's great to see you. Oh, hello, hello. Okay. So let's, let's, so, so, hey, did you get, you, you said your, you got your stuff. You said your stuff. Yes, I was wolfing I down I salad. I everything and that I needed to say. I mean, hold on to your butts. That was enough, right? Yeah, that, it's amazing. <laughs> oh, I did want to mention, yeah. um, I was at Quil Quilting Politic mentioned that uh, the decimal number for quilts, the Dewey decimal number. Yes. I got dibs on getting a tattoo of that. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Dewey decimal number for quilts? Hold on. What does um, that mean? The Dewey Decimal Number for, like, you know, in the library. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, gosh. And now it has scrolled by, and now I can't find it. What is it? it yeah, you got to say. Four, it had fours and sixes in it. Oh, no. I that lost is, it. That is so badass. That is really cool. <laughs> I didn't write it down. Is it okay to make a Quilt Nerd t-shirt out of it? What do you think? That'd be fun. Wouldn't that be fun? I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> Great idea. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry about the food. I was so hungry. Uh, I had to eat. 
Sorry about the eating. I had to do it. I was so hungry. Okay. Now. <clears throat> now we go to the cinema. No, I don't know. Now we do this. Okay, now we do this. We're going to watch some, some of this uh, exhibit video. We, you know, we, we usually go till about, we go about a couple hours. We hang out for a couple hours. We do it two times a week, Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Central and Saturday nights at 8 p.m. Central. We, we're, we're dark the first week of the month. I wasn't dark last week, but the show was. Oh, oh, and by the way, listen, what I, I didn't do and I forgot to do it and I didn't talk to the bakery about it. I, I completely just didn't even. We are going to run reruns, right? But I didn't, I didn't even. Anyway, what, so, so, the, so the show will always be on even if it's not live. So the, the first week of the month, we'll, we'll, we'll broadcast a rerun. I mean, this show's been on for like two years. Isn't that crazy? That's really crazy. I mean, on for two years, you know. The first, the, the first months, it was like my hardcore, like, I don't know. What, not, what was I going to say? Yeah, Fury Road. Like, my, <laughs> like the people who have just been like here from, from the very beginning who are here. Um, you know, just a few, a few of us, right, uh, together hanging out and doing this. And I don't know. I mean, there's so much content. It's pretty amazing. And, and the content that's on YouTube, the archive of all the shows that's on YouTube, you know, it's, it, th there will be a membership at some point, like a, a YouTube membership to access that. We've been talking about it a long time. People have come to me and said, you need to do that. And I agree because, but it's been hard to, it's been hard for me to do it because, you know, I have imposter syndrome and who among us feels like, you know, I don't know, asking for pay for work that they do. I don't know. I mean, it's just, it's like really hard. But like the, the huge archive of Quiltner, I mean, you're talking about thousands of hours of really, really cool like content. And so, so that, um, the YouTube membership will happen pretty soon, and so that to to access the archive of all of the Quilt Nerd shows for two years, you know, it'll be it'll be something per month, you know, which is fair. It's very fair, I think. Yeah. Um, and if you would like to subscribe to Tier Five, you can get a gold-plated <laughs> disc of Mary on Cold Medicine episodes. Ah! Oh, that was fun, wasn't it? We watched like weird animation. Oh God, that was a great show. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to clip that because anniversary week is coming up in August. So I'm gonna make some fun, some fun things for the anniversary of the show. Um, I gotta, I gotta get that. I was like, oh, this is great. I couldn't speak. I had no voice. It was, I really was high on cold medicine and we were watching like trippy quilt animation videos from the depths of the internet. It was great. It's a good time. Um, and so, yeah, so anyway, so, so we're going to watch some video, um, tonight, uh, on, I, I yeah, we're going to watch it from this, from this, um, trip to the New England Quilt Museum a couple, uh, over a month ago. Hang on. Um, and we watched a bit of it before, uh, a couple weeks back, but I wanted to show you, uh, the rest of it in higher resolution because it was, it's a, it's a great, it's good. It's a very good video. Uh, in terms of the quality of the video and so forth. But what I showed you before, we watched some of it. Um, I didn't want to do the rest of it until I could give you a better copy, basically. So I worked on that. And um, and Wonky, the, the, when I was high on cold medicine <laughs> on a live stream, I think that's what we were talking about. And I think it was, yeah, it was in 2022. Okay. So you're gonna have to help me. Hey, Susanna, you're gonna have to help me, Cake, and, and everybody watching to remind me where we are in this video because here's my kicky intro, by the way. This wasn't there last time. Six of these were made for Civil War soldiers. Okay. So, so we and did watch was... this. So this is Pam Weeks, curator. She's taking us through the portable patchwork exhibit, which is on right now at New England Quilt Museum. Thank you to Jill Alexander, who helped facilitate this trip. And we had quilt nerds there. Saucy Stitcher was there, Slim Quilt Pants. Let's see, we see them as we scroll through. You see the quality is so much better, right? Like it's super high res. How far did we watch, Stephanie? We watched um, the... I feel like did she just do this whole 
exhibit and then that's where we ended or has she gotten through this whole thing when nope nope because I, wanna, I feel like you did 20 like 20 or 25 minutes yeah it was we want i know we saw these two quilts because these two quilts were it was one, one quilt split in half right that was fascinating um and then i don't think we got let's just see let's see where we let's see where, where we was the pot holder pot holder quilt the pot holder pot I holder quilt is one a, of the later ones i think we did see we saw this one we saw that the, the, the actual pot holder we did mm -hmm. we did yeah, the one that's literally made out of, like, the insurance company pot. Yeah, this one. We yeah. did. Okay, you guys. Okay, well then. Because I have the book, and this is, like, one of my favorite things in the book because it's so tongue-in-cheek and it's, silly. It's really great. Let me just play this while it's uh, while I'm muted. It's interesting because I thought – we'll get to it next. I thought we didn't watch this far, so I rendered this video <laughs> – real nice but I don't we don't have to watch it again even though it's in higher res like that's not that that's not very fun well okay you guys well that's interesting maybe it's okay I was so chatty because I mean I thought we we needed to watch the rest of this I didn't think we watched it all. look at look at all these quilt nerds okay so that's Jill over there that's my mom that's Ivy Cadivy back there in black this these are these lovely ladies who were not quilt nerds but we love them there's Saucy over here, and I don't know, where's Slim? Slim and Max. Slim quilt pants and Max, where are you hiding? And there's the lovely Laura, and that's that's um, Pam Weeks. Where's Sl Slim? There, the other you are, you're hiding behind the post. Look, 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 it's Slim and Max. <laughs> anyway, so, um, Anyway, okay, so so we did see this, y'all. I'm sorry. I, I I went through and I made the intro and I made an outro and I got the resolution all better and now I still have some more of the tour to show you. Well, that's all right. That's all right. There was a lot of footage. We got a lot of footage and it looks cool. And we can still look at this because it is much better. You can see the the writing. And let's hear. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Let's hear Pam talk about it. Actually, hang on one second. That's definitely worth worth it. Let's go over here. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Let's hear the curator speak about it. You know, you, 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 know, you cut it out and then you turn it over and it reverses. Yeah. yeah. And Your you get through it and you go, question. oh, I'm not taking that out. Right. Right. Exactly. So come on over and see the joke quilt. Okay. Yeah. We have a joke quilt over here. It's a potholder, potholder quilt. Oh, yeah. Carl Hellbush. Oh, that's funny. And his life as a very successful farmer. But at one point, he was a salesman for the World Herald, which was a newspaper in which town in Nebraska, Laura? The Omaha. Omaha, the Nebraska. Omaha World the Omaha World Herald. And my theory is that when he sold you a subscription, you got a potholder. Oh, <laughs> But then when he quit selling subscriptions, his wife had this box of potholders. And what do I do with my potholders? Well, I think it would be, actually be a great picnic quilt. Yes. Yes, it will. Lay it on the grass, except mm -hmm. the ants are going to come up through the holes. She tried to fix some of the holes. But the reason I call it my joke quilt is because it's a potholder, potholder quilt. Yeah. And she was one short, so she had to go back to the kitchen. <laughs> And grab the one she'd been using so it's true. and wash it and sew it with a quilt. That's really very meta, right? And we dated it 1960 because that's about the time that zip code was starting to be used. Oh. And that has zip code in his address. Did you hear that? They dated it to 1960 because that was around the time the zip code began to be used in the United States. Whoa, that's crazy. It's not really spooky, but it's wild. Oh, wow. I got a phone call from Texas. Pam, I found a problem with the bottle. You're never going to believe this. You are. Yeah. Wow. But it's for grass. But do you want to have a second one that was made of white crochet bottles? And this was above my head. Sorry, that's. Just talking to somebody off camera. Looking back, I should have bought the second one. I wonder where it is in somebody's collection. Somebody's collection. So, um, yeah, it's 
It's really a oh no, we didn't watch that. Did we didn't watch this? We didn't. We didn't see this part. Did we? Did we? Okay. Did we? No. Okay. Oh, I knew it. Thank God. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So we've got the last six minutes. We didn't watch this part. Oh, thank goodness. I knew I wasn't totally crazy. Okay. Oh yeah, and then just look, we just got oh the, the up art piece. Yes, oh, come on. one more. I mean, oh my God. so this one is an enigma. Look, it's Jill Alex. Oh, look, I got a great look at her face. Look at her cute face right here. The way she's looking off, she's like, she's like this. Yeah, little scamp. Okay. Except that the designer of it was freaking brilliant. Yeah. This is the block. And she had to plan the binding so that it would interface and not interrupt the design. So we've got red binding here on both these blocks. We have the pink fabric binding here on both these blocks. And the other thing that's brilliant, instead of individually binding every block, she bound the edges that met in strips, and then she put one long piece of binding down the red Ugh. bits. Okay, I'm tapping it back. Can we just, 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 just. This quilt is genius, okay. And instead of individually binding every block, she bound the edges that met in strips, and then she put one long piece of binding down the red bits. And we'll have a cheat again. Again, it's my quilt, I can touch it. You don't really get it until you see the back. It's so cool. That stripe is ridiculous. It's so great. Is it twill? Like it, it's some kind of heavy duty fabric. It has no binding in it, and yet it's quite a heavy quilt. Mm -mm. I think you're right, Mary. I think it is a twill. Right? Twill it's weave. Like, like that. That I just saw that kind of a shine. Yeah, it. the red's a twill weave. Wow. And look at the tightness of the stitching that she used to join the blocks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right, Eva. All right, like, so everybody get out there and start making potholder quilts. Yeah. Yeah. When I gave my presentation. In case you're just joining us or you don't, you know, you're not sure what she's talking about, a potholder quilt is basically a quilt as you go. You know, you make a block, and instead of putting your block aside and making a bazillion other blocks and then joining your blocks into rows and joining your rows into a quilt top, you, you quilt it as you go. You know, you make a block and you make your sandwich you know, you make your club sandwich and then you come back to your quilt making and then you, <laughs> and then you put your batting and your backing and, and you know, you, and you quilt, you basically make a bunch of mini quilts and then you join those together. Have you done it, Steph? Have you done it? I have. Yeah. What? Oh, tell me about I it. Got, I got Pam's book. I want to say Quilt yeah. Co oh. offered it yes. like at a yes. special price. Yes, we did. Yes. Like when she, I guess she partnered with Quilt yep. Co when she yep. released it. Yep. And I was like, oh, this looks so fascinating. So I got it. And then I was, I was like, this is brilliant. I've heard of the technique before. Mm -hmm. I'd never heard of it called a potholder quilt, though. Um, and I, Lisa was asking, um, when did that term come about? I think it's pretty old. It goes back into the 1800s, definitely. Yep. Um, and now I guess we would just call it quilt as you go. But um, yeah, the, I did one of a pretty big quilt I made for um, a special event last year. I did as a potholder quilt. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh just, yeah, that's like, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just don't have like the arm strength to wrestle a quilt through a domestic machine, and mm -hmm. I did not want it to go to a long armor because I I had some specific mm -hmm. needs and mm -hmm. you know the way that it was quilted. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, um, I heard you mention finishing school. I hope people are enjoying it. And and I, I I remember on the show I said something that I hadn't really thought about before, which is that people think quilt makers are patient, and we're not. Like we want to do stuff faster so we can make something else and like we, but i think the thing that takes the most patience of all of the things i've ever done with making a quilt is domestic machine quilting you have to adjust you have to shift you have to haul you have to you have, it it's yeah. to do it and it's, not like give up it's just like i think it's the hardest thing it's it's frustrating, you know, mm -hmm. to keep it like not going funky, and yeah. it is also a physical endeavor. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I like I've I've done a couple of bed size quilts, like doing a spiral, you mm -hmm. know, like a spiral 
pretty close spiral mm -hmm. quilting or even Baptist fan type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And oh my gosh, it's like a workout. It really is. It really is. And like I would, I would yeah. put myself up against any CrossFit person. I can't, <laughs> I can't jump on a giant cube, but I have wrestled a king size quilt through a domestic. You <laughs> really a king? Not really. It was not king sized, but, but I did. It was, it was pretty big. I have like at least a full size quilt. Phew. Yeah. And then just to like, to keep the drag, I mean, the, the, when something's really well quilted on a domestic, it's amazing because you have to like, if it's of any size, you have to roll it up. Yeah. And like put it on your shoulder and then like not have it drag. And so your, your quilting's all jacked. I bless well, I you. I can say that none of the quilts that I have quilted on a domestic machine as like full sized are very good <laughs> because that it makes is, me it's feel like it, really hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. It's very hard. Yeah. Whoa, L Riggs, you're gifting five tier one subs to the community. Where's our kitten? There it is, our kitten, she's here, she's here. Oh my God, our kitten, look, look. So when, when someone gives a gift subscription to the community, the sewing kitten comes and Lisa, she's so beautiful and she's given wonderful all over the, all over the show. You know, um, the timeline of the show is peppered with L Riggs giving gift subscriptions and when that happens, when anyone gives a gift subscription, the little sewing kitten comes up. And so people, if you saw your name in the chat or if you got a little notification, L Riggs just gave you a tier one subscription. And what that means um, is that you're supporting the show, which it takes a lot to make this show. It doesn't look like it. And I know you can watch it for free technically, but to have the full experience being a subscriber is really the way to go. And Lisa just gave a gift subscription to Zoshi, Zoshi JPEG, love that. Len, Ren, Cla well, screen names are hard. Screen names are the hardest language. Um, and Lee Westfall and Rebecca and Bag of Smiles. Well, Bag of Smiles, like, I love that name. I love all the names. But um, so now you get to take the emotes out for a spin. And people in the chat, if you, if you uh, feel like jumping in, like the tier one emotes are really fun. You know, the welcome baskets and the, I forget all what they are now. But uh, you don't have to watch ads now, you subscriber people and you get, get the giveaway. We're gonna have a giveaway at the end of the month. And by the way, tier two and tier three people, uh, th that patchwork that I keep threatening to give away, I brought it to Iowa, I'm gonna give it away. This like this patchwork that I've got. Anyway, there's gonna be some free, some good giveaways for tier one people, and or tier two and tier three, and then we're gonna do it. Anyway, welcome to the Quilt Nerd subscriber community. It's a good time, and I really appreciate it. We all do. It takes a lot to, to make the fl plane fly. So, okay, thanks, Lisa. You're the best. You're just amazing. Okay. So this is this last little bit from Pam, and then, uh, and then, we'll, then we'll just we'll say our goodbyes. And when we're going to watch the space die thing. It's a minute and a half. It's very interesting. In okay. 2011, from the American Quilt Study Group, somebody anonymously yelled from the audience, they weren't called potholders. That's not a 19th century term. Oh. And I looked at her, and I countered it. Of course, you always think of the right thing to say two hours later. Yeah. yeah. But what I say to people now is, anybody in the room not know what a potholder is? <laughs> right. And if I tell you that these end up in stacks of finished blocks like potholders, everybody gets it. Mm. The only reference we've found that even comes close is in a Godey's Ladies book from 1832. It talks about teaching your children patchwork by having them use up your scraps and making kettle holders. Oh for the maid so she won't burn her pants. So that's gotta be a problem. That makes yeah. sense. Right. But there's nothing about making a whole bunch of them and sewing them together with quilt. Interesting. The first reference is Persis Sibley Anderson in 1848. Hmm. Getting heckled at AQSG. I feel like it's like, I'm not surprised, <laughs> you know? <laughs> that's called chintz, blah, blah. Yeah. It's the only, the only time it's ever happened. <laughs> she was not happy. With I'm sure, yeah. Wow. They're, they're tough. They're sticklers, yeah. 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 This is wonderful. Oh, yeah, we still have a lot of AQS changing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So this is a hello potholder. This is a this is a Victorian thing. This is interesting. Um, this one tells the story of an organization which I had never heard of in my life until I saw the ribbon in this quilt. And at the bottom of the ribbon is NSGW. And when I Googled NSGW, I came up with an organization, hmm. Native Sons of the Golden West. Hmm. You have to be male. You have to be born in California. They were a really big deal in the 19th century. 
and they're an important deal now because they've morphed from being history centered only to doing a lot of charitable work in California. They're in charge of several of the historic buildings like the Adobe building in Petaluma, California is under their care and they raise money to continue the, um, the conservation of it. In the 19th century, the celebration around the end anniversary of California being admitted to the Union was a party to die for. They had many, many civic organizations, including the native sons of the Golden West, organized different portions of a... Look at all those fabrics. I mean, there's not a repeat. I don't see one single repeat in just like any frame. It's crazy. Four or five day celebration. They had open kitchens. They had parties. They had yacht races. They had horse races. They had soirees. They had dances. They had art exhibits. And in 1890, you could go onto the website of the California State Library and find a poster with all the activities. And the ribbons were worn by the participants. And on the ribbon, it says Admission Day, San Francisco, September 1890. Hmm. And this is the Fremont group. And the organization divided itself into parlors. parlors. Hmm. So this is the Fremont Parlor, number 44, of the Native Sons of the Golden West. And you can still find these on eBay. This has two two ribbons from different organizations in it. So All right, one more time. It is made of silk pillows what with a cotton backing. That's wild. Is that crazy? It's, what a it's, cool it's Victorian of... crazy thing. So crazy quilts, as you know, were generally just used as a topper or on a, or on the top of a piano or, or to drape on a table. Hmm. That, what a great part of the collection. It's that's funny. so, I mean, I, it's so unusual. I've never seen it before. That's really, really So funny. I have a 19, 1980s pillow quilt that was very obviously made for a waterbed. Uh oh, man. The thing is, has squares this big with some sort of weird, it's black velvet with different colored crosses on it and various colors of velveteen. And they're pillows, and they're about this big, and that quilt weighs about 150 pounds. It is huge and bulky. And it would be here today, but I really didn't want to put up a thing to, it was too big. Oh, who that? Who that? There you go. How about that? There you go. So what I need to do, uh, and Jill knows that I need to talk to Pam and I need to say, hey, can I put this up on my channel? Because I was like, she was... I'll make it this video and you can put it on your channel or I can put it on my channel and I don't really care. And I don't <sighs> ultimately, I mean, they, but you know, I don't know, maybe they don't want it on their channel. The point is, is that it'll be on YouTube soon enough, but I got to talk to Pam. Okay. So that's it except for this space dye thing. So, so I asked you about space dye cake and I was like, do you know what this is? <laughs> and you were like, yeah, I think so. How would you describe space dye? Uh, oh, wait, hold on. The poll. Oh, my God. The, the view. The view results. The poll. Have you tried embroidery? 89% of you said yes. 89%. 5% said no. 5% said, yeah, I, no, but I'd like to try. Wow. Amazing. I, that's more people than I thought, actually. I, I don't know. I guess a lot of people have tried it. That's really cool. Anyway, so space dye. Like, if you were explaining it to someone who who didn't know what it was, how would you explain it? It is, uh, you know, when you send some uh, fabric to the space station. <laughs> <laughs> no, nice. it is, uh, you know, I worked at Joanne Fabrics very briefly a few years ago for the holiday season. Mm -hmm. And if I remember correctly, a lot of what they had as space dyed was in like the... Um, you know, they were like the, the performance knits. <laughs> and yeah, I yeah, performance knits, yep. Essentially, the, the, um, the threads or whatever they whatever it's made out of is the colors are done beforehand. Yep. It's kind of like yarn dyed in when you are looking at um, things like cotton or linen. Mm -hmm. And so, but I guess space dyed is kind of the same theory. You did a technique. fine job, a fine job, exactly. And I remembered that I, yeah, I, I put together images for this a long time ago and never got to it in a, in a different show. So actually I have images of what Stephanie's talking about. Yes, exactly. The performance gear is very helpful. It's like, yeah, like, exactly. Like Nike yeah, like makes... All the, 
make your own yoga pants. Exactly. Like kind of fabrics. Exactly. Yeah, with their wicking or their stretchy or their all polyester. Yes, I don't know. Yes, this they have lycra. Yep, exactly. And so, so I got this email. Um, it was a mass email or something from some fan fabric manufacturer, I think, in Japan. I'm going to show you. This is a very good example of what we're talking about. Um, about how they have new space-dyed fabric f for quilters, I believe. I mean, it must have been specifically for quilters. And I was like, oh, how interesting. And so I was like, how do they make this? And I found this video. And we're going to watch it. And then we're going to say goodnight. Um, God, good times, man. Good times. I love this show. If I didn't make it, I would watch it. <laughs> I think that would be, that would be, that's the goal of, to make a show I'd want to watch too. Oh yeah, this is great. Oh, I love Marnie. Oh God, I love Marnie. That's a very expensive brand of wool. Okay, here we go. Let's watch how they make space dye. There's no words in this. It's just, which is why we shouldn't play this. This It's got music, but it, we don't need to listen to the music. And then I'll get copyrighted. How is it made? Okay, and now I'll play a little music while we watch of my own that I've paid for. How about that? Space dying, it says. In this video, we show you how printing is done on the yarns. There are different types of printing. Today, we'll show you printing in hanks. In hanks. Cool. Okay. Let's play our favorite genre, which is uh, traditional blues or disco. No, actually disco, because this is space dying. Okay. All right. Let's continue. Hanks are lying on the conveyor belt. The Hanks makes a first passage, make a first passage under the pipes that have already been set by the computer. Under the, the Hanks make a first pass through under the pipes that have already been set by the computer with the colors recipe. Okay, interesting. After this first step, the Hanks pass through a steaming room in order to fix the color. Okay, interesting. So there, so there, okay. The process continues under three water passages needed to clean the hanks from the exceeding of dyes, from like the excess of dyes, perhaps. I'll link this video in the, in the chat, of course, so you can find it. That's interesting. I mean, some of you have done, you know, home dyeing or, or hand dyeing. To do this, this is kind of crazy. What, what do you have to say, Steph? You, you, you've done this kind of stuff. Well, I've just seen, uh, I have not done it, but okay. I have seen where uh, knitters will do this with their hanks of like sock yarn and they mm. will paint them. Um, and they, they go through some pretty crazy processes to make mm. like these cool striped socks the way that they want them. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, there's nothing new, right? They're, they're doing this on a, on a different scale and yeah, interesting. To be continued, what? That's it. All right. Well, that's all you get, I guess. <laughs> They're not going to show everything. Um, interesting. Well, there you go. There's part of it. I don't know. If you want to know more about space dyeing, let me know. We can look. We can look at it more. Um, ooh, a nun maker's getting ready to ice dye some cotton for a quilt. That's so cool. Mother Nature dyed fabric yesterday. Molly's done yarn dyeing. Margaret cats like my spacey music. I did my best. I have to say, ice dyeing is so fun and it easy. Is? It's a little messy, but, or it can be a little messy if you, you know, 
What does that it's mean? Really I, what does it mean, ice dyeing? <laughs> what What is it? So ice dyeing, you get your fabric, the like you know white cotton fabric, yeah. and you kind of scrunch it all up and you dump ice on it, like literally like a bag of ice oh. from the convenience store. And you want it like on a platform, like a um, like a drying rack or a. Um, uh -huh. I think they suggest using like quick, like the cookie cooling trays. You know, they're those grid yeah, meshy yeah, yeah, sort of thing, yeah. and you sort of suspend it in like a a, a tub or something, mm -hmm. and then you sprinkle your dye over it, or you squirt your dye, and so, then as the my ice melts down, it makes all of these really cool marbly designs in your fabric. The ice itself is the resist yeah, or whatever. That's yeah, the ice beautiful. is doing the work. It's so cool. Oh, yeah. that's and so you cool. don't know what you're going to get. It's like even more like, um, I mean, like with tie dye, you can kind of, you kind of know what's going to happen based on, you know, the way you tie it. But this is like completely random. Like you, you can kind of direct where the color goes, but it's going to be a surprise. So. Ooh, I just yes, saw it. SJ, yes. SJ Pepper yeah. does a ton of ice dyeing. Oh, like, awesome. I th does she teach? I feel like she does teaches she? stuff too, so. Oh yeah, ooh, 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 so, okay, that's great. And I just like Googled like ice dye quilt stuff. That's uh, great. And Eva has a really good point. Do not forget to say what your what time your stream is tomorrow, Stephanie Cake. Absolutely true. I miss SJ Pepper too, my great cats. Listen, I gotta tell you, I mean, I super miss her. I don't know, you know, and people come and go, it's totally cool. I'm not like, what did, what did I do? Or what do we do? I mean, I, you know, there's nothing, you know, it just happens, man. You never know. In fact, I'll tell you, there is a person who I connected with about the Bertha Mextroth research project, you know, and she's so amazing. And we really connected and she, you know, I, I haven't been able to get a hold of her, you know, and like, she kind of, I didn't want to say she goes to, but she, you know, she was, but you know, and I was like, well, you don't know what people are going through. And I'm not saying this is in, in any way what, what our friend is, you know, I don't know, but, but it turns out that, yeah, you know, this person that I hadn't heard from in a long time, she's got a family emergency. It's, it's an extended, sad family emergency, you know, and it, you just, you just don't know. And, and I, I, I doubt, you know, anything happened to make her go, but you know, if you see her around, tell her. I miss her. I don't want to put some weird pressure on her to be like, hey, can you come back? Like you were, but yeah, she's pretty, pretty, pretty cool individual. And I hope maybe she's in the lurker lounge. She's like, yeah, I'm good. I'm just going to watch. Anyway, whatever it is. Um, yeah, we, we will always love our SJ Pepper. What a, what a scamp she was. Um, anyway, so great. So there you go. So, so tomorrow night, special Dunton stream, our own Stephanie Cake here on Twitch. Uh, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, the link's in the chat. Check it out, I'm gonna be there. Hopefully I can, my mom's gonna be there. You know, I don't know, I don't know her schedule, but but uh, I can't wait to hear it and support stuff too. And then Kenny's gonna stream too. So you know, we, we got our thing going over here. So take care, if you don't subscribe to the show, I hope you, that you will consider subscribing because yeah, it makes it a thing, you know, in a lot of ways. And then you get, you get stuff. I'm never good at selling it, but I hope that you subscribe. Thank you, everybody, and thank you to Stephanie Cake. Uh, I can't do this without you. I don't want to. Aw, oh, shucks. Um, thank you. You know we have fun. We love it. Yeah, we do. We, have, we, we do. It's a great group of people. So, All right. Take care, everybody, and be good, not too good, and I will see you tomorrow, perhaps. Good night, Kay. Love you. Bye. Um.